crashing through the lies and disinformation. It's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, we just broke down a lot of important health news. Shifting gears, the top story on Infowars.com is also the top story on DrudgeReport.com. And it says chase fees on cash, limits withdrawals on some accounts, bans foreign wire transfers. Money can come in, but it can't go out. And breaking today or tomorrow, I have other sources that say other big banks are telling their customers, get ready for similar things. This is the beginning of capital controls. For those that don't know, when a country goes into hyperinflation, they usually don't let you get your money out of the country. They don't let you leave. And the article updated this morning is up on DrudgeReport.com, Infowars.com. Very, very important. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can go to LaRouche Pack, and we'll put the website uh, up on screen for folks coming up, LaRouchePack.com, L-A-R-O-U-C-H-E, Pack.com, and find all the documentation and videos. Lyndon LaRouche has been called a right-winger by the left. Uh, he's been called a left-winger by the right. He, uh, Ronald Reagan... I looked this up when I heard it over 15 years ago. It was true. You know, called him, you know, just incredibly smart on geopolitics. Two CIA directors uh, listened to what he had to say. He would do weekly briefings, flying his helicopter to the Langley, Virginia, and landing and having secret briefings with the CIA director. I mean, what they talked about was reportedly secret. That made uh, George Bush Sr. jealous of him. So they set him up uh, and threw him in the Hooskow as a political prisoner. And, and whenever I talk about government corruption, they go, oh, that's Lyndon LaRouche. People don't even know who he is, uh, you know, young people sometimes. And they just think, oh, that's like a dirty word or something. Of course, that that has failed. The system's tried to do that. I don't necessarily agree with all of the solutions they come up with, but you cannot doubt their analysis of geopolitics and how it works is very, very accurate. And we're always honored to have Mr. LaRouche on. He's a World War II veteran. Uh, worked in all sorts of operations back then. He's 90 years old uh, and is one of the most interesting people, I think, alive out there. I don't mean to get him on and throw a bunch of laurels at him. I just want folks to know he's very, very interesting. He's only with us for two segments. Then we've got a bunch of other international news and Second Amendment news coming up. But I wanted to get him on because it was back last year he was on the air and, and, and folks had pulled these clips up and pointed them out and warned of nuclear blackmail domestically, warned of currency devaluation, warned of mega crises if we didn't impeach Obama. Uh, now they have uh, started to, to devalue the U.S. credit rating, uh, using the debt crisis to bring us into this current situation and really blame people concerned about debt with the insolvency of the Anglo-American banking establishment that itself is completely uh, zombie. So I want to get him to talk about geopolitically where we are, what's happening, with the big banks, what just happened with the shutdown, where things are going. And so we're joined by Lennon LaRouche. Thank you so much for coming on with us. Good to be with you. Okay, sir. So go ahead. You've got the floor. Where are we geopolitically? What's happening in the banking sector? Why are big banks saying you're not going to you know, be able to get your money out of the country? What's happening? We're going through a, a, a actual, if it goes through any further, we're going through a mass rate of death in the United States. As it's going on in Europe also, similarly. But this, uh, when the trend and the policy of this president, Barack Obama, is mass murder. There's no question about it. This is, this is Hitler kind of stuff. Uh, quantify that, sir, because you've been predicting exactly what's now happening and them using the crisis they've engineered to bring in total control the gear up of Homeland Security against the American people. Uh, Mr. LaRouche, what's happening? Well, what's happened is that the, uh, we, the, our government has been taken over by a secret government, in which is associated with the President Obama. And this has gone to one step and another. Just, we've just gone through another step, which will, is actually really mass murder. Mass murder of citizens of the United States. The, the only term you can call, call for it. Uh, this is, of course, I, Obama's been up to this in his first year, uh, year in, in office. And I attacked him on that, and, uh, as other people had exposed him in his health care policies, were in, in the direction of Hitler-style mass murder. 
And it's even more so right now. The most recent uh, development by the Obama is in the direction of genocide. Frank, just plainly, uh, Hitler style. It, Hitler started on a regularly small place, uh, small uh, considerations, but they began to build up more and more and more. And what just happened to the president's actions now, he's taken another step deeper for greater rates of mass murder of our own citizens. That's right. That's for those that don't know, IMF World Bank loans and, 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 and high rates are on record killing tens of millions a year worldwide. And now that's expanding into Europe, people starving, riots, you name it. More and more of that coming here. But, sir, I remember... Six years ago, when Obama, or seven years ago, was running, and some of the uh, folks over at LaRouchePack.com and also at the publication going to meetings with Obama's health uh, care head, even before he was elected, exposing the plan for death panels, exposing the plan for ration care, exposing it was actually a Trojan horse, not even a real socialist health care for people, but a fascist health care system. You were, and your organization, were the first, and people can go see the videos on your site, I was just remembering them, to expose how bad it was before the bill was even written or introduced. Break down what was really in the bill and how, how your team knew what was in it. Well, that's my specialty. That's what I do. Is it not just on this subject, but other subjects. I'm concerned with the world economy, I'm a specialist in forecasting in that area, and I have a lot of influence in that area, naturally. Uh, how big it is, or, or how big it is personally, is not relevant. The fact is that I'm on the case where other people have not, and more and more people realize again and again that I'm on the case. I could, I could expand on that, but it's that simple. I mean, this is what I do. I'm a forecaster. I'm an economist. I, I do a lot of forecasting. I'm probably one of the most successful forecaster in terms of very specific kinds of forecasts. When, when did you first start to work with um, international intelligence and the CIA? Wasn't it in the OSS? I mean, how did you, because I, I find this fascinating for your view on the world, 90 years old, all the things you've seen. How did you get to where you were giving weekly briefings to the CIA directors in the what? 1980s? And, and what did that inside track give you on the different factions in the system? Well, I can say it goes back to the 1980s. Uh, in the 19, uh, 1971, for example, uh, I first had, had, had made a forecast of what was going to happen. I made it actually in, in 1968. And uh, this, it hit. Uh, I had made the forecast. Everybody else in the forecasting business had said it was not possible. What happened in that 1971 uh, collapse? And from that point, I was challenged by a British representative of the British uh, system on, on this case, and I defeated him in a debate which we had in Queen's College. And this thing stuck, and from that point on, I was a, well, I'd been a forecaster and so forth in, uh, earlier, but this thing established my, intent, my intentions uh, as being sort of worldwide, and people began to get very excited about what I was doing because I was getting attention, and not the facts I was giving were, were the facts. So well, that was well sir, way. give us the facts now on where we are geopolitically, financially, and what's happening in the markets, what's happening with the system blaming the global derivatives debt on people that that are concerned about it. I mean, they, they, they're trying to blame those of us now that have been concerned for what they've done. No, this is, there's, no, there's no lack of evidence on this thing. This is what has happened is the health, take the health care policy. That's the thing that's right on the table right now, Obamacare. And that is murderous. It, there's no question about it. It's mass murderous and intentionally so. It goes together with, Obama has always been, in his wild president, has been close to the Queen of England. And the Queen of England has a standing policy now, which has been going on for some time, saying that we have to reduce the human population on this planet from seven billion people down to less than one. That is her avowed policy. Obama is an exponent of that same policy. He's a supporter of that same policy. As a matter of fact, his position as, in, as president was a result of the British Empire's support for him. 
the financing of his campaign and so forth. So this has been that policy all the way through. And the point was, is reduce the human population. If you actually go back earlier, it didn't really start with Obama. You go back in the, in the uh, death of, you know, our, our, one of our presidents uh, who, was, who was actually murdered. Um, and so we, we've had this, and from since that time, from the middle of the 1960s, uh, we've been on a course downhill. It, it starts out rather small, but the death of Kennedy, of, of John F. Kennedy, opened up a new region. We got into this war in Indochina, which is a stupid thing to get into, which MacArthur had warned us against quite accurately. And this is, uh, it's gone step by step by step. If you look at the economy, the U.S. economy, in terms of per capita terms, in terms of other considerations, has been on the descent ever since the beginning of the war in Indochina. And it started really as a, a result of the Kennedy being assassinated. So from that time on, the, the people of the United States have been getting poorer and poorer and poorer. Sure, even before the 1992 Rio summit where they called for a post-industrial world as the global policy and even thanked Ted Turner and Prince Philip uh, and others for helping develop the strategy out of the Royal Commission on population that they had adopted it from from 1949 that I first learned about reading your publications and then went to the library and indeed was able to find that publication for worldwide eugenics, uh, cutting off resources and genocide. Long before the term Agenda 21 was coined at Rio, uh, your, your writings, your researchers' writings, uh, again, um, documented their program to create world government, not to create peace, but to systematically destroy nation states and cut off resources. We're now going under this in the West. Is there any way to reverse it? Yes, there is. If you, well, you right now, you will probably notice that the U.S. population has been increasingly angry. The citizenry has been increasingly angry against Obama and wants him out of office. He manages by certain kinds of support to stay in office. He should have been expelled a long time ago for what he does. Uh, but that's been going on. We are now in a position where, with this last legislation that he put through, he actually is condemning a great number of our people to death, early death, by his so-called health care policies and related economic policies which affect health care, his ins insurance policies. These things are mass murderers. This has been going on in a, as a direction ever since shortly after Kennedy was uh, assassinated. And no one can deny it. Everything they're doing is to shut down small businesses, small farms, small factories, shutting down our power plants. They are completely engaging in warfare against the United States. What is the, the end game strategy there, um, Mr. LaRouche? Well, the, the end game is that it was the Queen's policy. The Qu Queen of England has, ha has been the leader in this policy saying the necessity is to reduce the human population of the planet from 7 billion people approximately to less than one. That's her policy. It's what she said again and again and again. That's the policy of her regime, of the monarchy, is genocide. So that, you know, Hitler is not, was not new on this thing exactly, but on genocide. But the Queen's policy is in accord with the population policies of Adolf Hitler in the early period of his uh, regime. You were on early in the year, I think it was in January, people can pull it up, and you said, we're headed towards nuclear war with China and Russia starting around Syria, and since then that's become the headlines, but the, the Obama regime has backed off for now. What's happening militarily? Well, the, po the policy is Russia has played an interesting role in this because it seemed for a while that Russia was a, a has been power. I don't think it's a great power right now. I mean, it's, an, it's on hard times, in its own regime. But its influence uh, has been accepted by other governments as well as R the Russian government itself. And its effects like China, for example, is watching this situation. Uh, Japan is aware of it and so forth. So we're aware that th this problem exists. Uh, it's, uh, it, we are that we are actually now, and, unless we let me put it this way clearly, I think make it clean. If we don't throw Obama out of office soon, 
And there's every reason to throw him out of office preemptively. He deserves to be thrown out of office, not only for his sake, but for the sake of our people in the United States. If his policies, as he's just put the new stage through into, into operation, if that policy is allowed, you're going to see hit open Hitler-style genocide applied to large sections of the population who are considered not fit to be survive, not fit to survive, not fit to live. Just and then, like meanwhile, Hitler they're doing everything they un, 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 unfit to live. Wow! And that's what he's done. That's what his legislation is right now on his new health care legislation. Exactly I know. I've read it. it. It's unbelievably Hitlerian, to say the least. It's 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 Malthusian. Let me ask you this question. Um, they're doing everything they can to block technological development, clean technologies. They want this neo-feudalistic system, as you say, under the British crown on record. They developed the program. So it is their program that's being followed, whether they're completely running it or not. Uh, if this goes through and they're able to carry this out, uh, it, it, it's terrible. But I don't see their plan actually working, but I do see it causing a giant World War III type scenario as the world finally stands up against the people that run America and uh, the UK. And I just can't believe we're going to allow ourselves to be the bad guys in this. I see the people standing up. And if we don't repudiate Obama and impeach him and arrest his minions, then it will set the precedent to allow them to continue the collision course towards World War III. Well, you've got a situation now in which you can fairly say that you have the American population, the U.S. population, the citizens, are more and more enraged against Obama and want him out. Now, the thing that keeps, there are some people, including Democrats and so forth, some Democrats and uh, are guilty of this sort of thing. But the, what the, the significant thing is that people in the main, except those who benefit from Wall Street, it's only is Wall Street is the only factor in the U.S. economy which really keeps Obama still in office. He couldn't have made it otherwise. Now, it, what, so what you have it, across the nation we have an explosion of determination, a rising tide of determination. Throw this guy out now while we're still alive. That's the mood out there. And it's increasing at a rapid rate. Well, I'm finishing my film, Obama Deception Too Soon, and that's basically, while making the film, the summation I came to. He's not just another puppet. He cannot be allowed to stay in because in another two years, they'll totally wreck us anyways. But regardless, we cannot allow them to commit all these crimes and not get in trouble or the precedent set to where we are a fascist regime. And now the banks are moving to keep people's money. I mean, this is getting scary. Well, that's what was, that has been the intention all the way through. What has happened recently, as popular opinion in particular in this nation, has recognized that and has recognized it not only because of what is happening inside the United States, but they're recognizing what has been happening in Europe. The situation in Europe is much more advanced in terms of pro-genocide trends than in the United States yet. But we're, on, we're going very rapidly in that direction, and Obama is the specific driver of that crime. I mean, this, this is the guy waiting for his Nuremberg trial. That's what, that's, that's what this president is. Is he? I mean, I understand he's a like figurehead of this whole takeover and, and a very enjoys it and is part of it. But but uh, and I understand it's important to bring him down to bring the whole corrupt cabal down. But specifically, a lot of top people I know, they say Obama is particularly evil and that he is actually enjoys all this and that uh, he is actually calling a lot of shots. Is that accurate or inaccurate? Sure, it's accurate. It's, you could put I, you could express it in other ways, but from the standpoint of popular opinion, Insofar as popular opinion has that view, the, va the view is valid. Other key points. Uh, I would say that I'm concerned about getting back our laws, because what we have now is not is not good. It is not something we should tolerate. We have to throw this government out of office now. Impeachment time. Buzz and all is due now. And that's an understatement. I mean, I cannot believe they're openly running torture ships off the coast. I can't believe they're openly training uh, in Army manuals. I'm sure you've seen this. 
uh, this is official news, they actually badmouth the founding fathers and say they were bad people, and they're training for war against anybody that is pro-national system, pro-liberty, pro-freedom. It's not even about left or right. I mean, it's cartoonish how officially authoritarian Obama is. I can't even believe that they're this out of control. They are out of control, but, they, but you're talking about a, something worse than Hitler. Hitler was, you know, reached very terrible levels of, of abuses. But he didn't have 10,000 nuclear worse. weapons. This is worse. How because, is it worse? Well, what, what you're headed for in potentially, which is the only factor of restraint in terms of the international situation, is the fact that this, we, are on, we were on the edge in the Syrian operation. We were on the edge of thermonuclear war globally. Just take the situation of Russia, the Russia's role in respect to S Syria. Then you had the op various kinds of operations back and forth on this sort of thing. And you, you, so if you look at the history of Obama with the crimes he's committed in office publicly and gotten by with that, you understand two things. First of all, that he's a criminal, really, by any standard of decency. And he's a great liar. Aren't and they also madmen? Because as you just stated, even General Dempsey, who's known as a pro-war guy most of the time, that's why they put him in, he went at midnight and told Obama, the military is not going to stand with you. And I'm not for military coups, but if it's stopping like Hitler, like, uh, you know, Operation Valkyrie, at least nonviolently politically saying no, I have confirmed, and it's even come out in the news, that the military basically blocked that operation um, a few weeks ago, saying this will probably lead to nuclear war. So that shows me how insane the Anglo-American leaders are. Well, absolutely. That's that's understood internationally. That's where we are. This man must be thrown out of office. The time for impeachment now. Summary impeachment now. Sir, what about the other elites? Because I know you have your finger on the pulse. I mean, I mean, they're not all this insane, are they? I mean, what, why why have they gotten so reckless? I mean, don't they know about Napoleon and Hitler and people? I mean, that's. I think that with people who are Wall Street oriented, generally, I think, are not exactly civilized to put the kind of structure on it. And they are they're worried about my money. You get this, you get the whole Wall Street crowd, my money. And you have all the people that go along with it. And you've got, look, you've got Republicans, you know, going along with this their way. You have members of the Democratic Party, leaders in the Congress, who are pushing the same thing. So we're coming to a collision course. And the thing, the thing to worry about is, are we going to have a bloody show inside the United States over this issue, this crime that's being committed under the leadership of Obama? Or are we going to stop it? Are we going to intervene and throw this guy out of office? Now, if we throw him out of office, we will probably also do some things to some of these swindlers on Wall Street who have ruined and are murdering people virtually with their policies. We, but we have to get back to our Constitution. This government is no longer operating on the basis of the federal Constitution, but directly opposite to it. The time for impeachment is now. That's and right. It's working for a foreign combine. And, and, and this is how Max Kaiser, who worked at the highest levels, even with Soros' son in Wall Street, he, he described them as suicide bankers. He said they would blow the world up if, it, if they got all the money, even though they'd be dead. It is an attitude of just craven uh, greed. But on top of it, it's worse because they're not even thinking about the larger ramifications. It's just a pure mindlessness. And it's not free market. It's backed up with taxpayer money, so they've been emboldened. They are insane. <laughs> well, this is sort of a Saudi-British operation, <laughs> which is doing all this. this is not, you know, actually, 9-11 was a product of a Saudi-British operation. And they've got these special gags on people who know the facts about 9-11. But 9-11 was a part of this process. And it was a British-Saudi operation. And the fact, that's the fact. But it's the British no, government and the Saudis, they're not going to survive World War III. 
Well, that is not an important, important question, I think. Uh, the, that's because the, the Saudis are also can be dis, dispensed with under certain conditions. Um, no, the question is, this has, we have to bring, we have to deal with the economic question, the economic policy. Okay, Lennon LaRouche, can you do five more minutes with us, sir? Sure. I've got to go to break for one minute. We'll start the next hour, and then we're going to get into some other issues. But, man, I tell you, you hear all this stuff, and it sounds wild. It's absolutely on target. And all I do is research this info. We are in so much danger, folks. I mean, the people running things are insane. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Folks, Lennon LaRouche is our guest, LaRoucheBack.com. And I got to tell you, I, I, I'd probably read 100 history books or more by the time I was 12 years old, but... The more you know, the more you don't know. And then by the time I was probably 16, 17 and first saw their quarterly intelligence review and was reading it, I knew so much history. I was like, oh, I've read this. I've read that. It was like most of it I knew was accurate. The parts I didn't know was accurate because I just didn't have that historical knowledge yet. It was gray area for me because I hadn't discovered it separately for myself yet. But the way they put it all together and 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 uh, what they lay out is 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 really helped me understand how the world works. And the funny part is from the John Burt Society angle, which people can claim is connected to whatever, they told a lot of the truth of what was going on. But I think when you get to the end of the day, there isn't really a left or right. There's are you pro-humanity, pro-civilization, or are you pro-war economy, genocide, death control? And we got four minutes left, uh, Lyndon LaRouche. Thank you for your time. Make the point you were saying about what we need to do, solutions now with the economy, ideas, how we stop this madness. Uh, first of all, impeach this president. That's the first thing you have to do. And the ability, the grounds for doing so more than richly exists. All right, then we have to think about how are we going to take the economy, for example, the European economy is collapsing. The transatlantic region is a disaster area for terms of economy. My view is, I'll just summarize it this way, there's one thing we could do. And that is if we could start a program of recovery, which could be started now, with, with getting this guy out. We would then think of taking our middle of the United States, the Mississippi West area. We'd lost our food supply. Our food supply has been destroyed by this operation, by these kinds of uh, operations. So we've got, again, we've got to get the food supply in there. We've got to rebuild some of our economy. We don't have the ability to put, maintain our own population. That's what's happened. Now, then what do we do? Well, we go across the, uh, the Asian region, into Asia. We cross there. We, restart, we start again thermonuclear fusion as a driver program. That is absolutely indispensable for the survival of civilization on the planet as a whole. It will take time to get there, maybe 10 years before we could actually... But giant, complete. peaceful Manhattan projects... Uh, advanced technologies, cleaner energies, uh, R&D, the opposite of what the neo-feudalists want. Yes, well, we, we, there are very specific things. The th thermonuclear fusion, which has been suppressed, we have a miniature version of thermonuclear fusion, which is now what the actual, what is required as thermonuclear fusion to ensure the survival of mankind on this planet is something we've got to get. But we have to start the program now, get the program moving, a recovery program immediately. Throw Obama out, agree to go ahead with the recovery program immediately, get our food supply, which has been destroyed in the middle of the United States. And if we just back off from World War III, the whole world will give a sigh of relief. It'll create confidence and investment and, and true globalism, people working together. Absolutely. It is possible. It, it's, it's, it's something I'm very much concerned about. My associates, for example, involved with this. We're concerned with this program. Thermonuclear fusion is an absolute requirement for the preservation of the human species. Okay, well, yes, sir. Thank you so much for your gracious time. Um, LaRouchePack.com, Lennon LaRouche. Are there other sites or other things you would point out for people to visit? Yes. <laughs> 
I know that uh, you've also got the publication side. People can link through uh, right there uh, at LaRouchePack.com. Thank you so much for the time. All right, we'll talk to him again in the future. Lennon LaRouche, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that guy is really interesting. Reagan thought he was interesting. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Stay with us. And we're going to get into the whole Second Amendment and the fight for our civil rights to self-defense.